Okay, today we're going to be doing some diagnosing to figure out a hard one-two shift, a pretty violent one-two shift, I should say, on a 1994 Chevy G30 van with a 4L60E. All right, now, just to give you a little background on this, this actually comes from another transmission shop that brought it to me that couldn't figure it out. Um, it actually is, you know, somebody that I am in competition with, but I know the manager um, fairly well, you know, we talk, and he asked me if I can please help him out because he was in a little bit of uh, hot water with his client, okay? They've been going back and forth, I think, for a couple of months and they can't figure it out. They can't get it to work right. So I said, no problem. You know, he says, whatever your fee is, I'll pay you. And um, and it ended up being, just to make a long story short, the problem is not even the transmission. So that's probably why maybe they had a little bit of issue trying to figure it out. So to diagnose this problem, we're gonna be using a pressure gauge. We're gonna be using an old scan tool. I can, I can use my my Apollo, my newer scan tool, but one of, one of my lead techs um, doesn't like to get rid of anything and he still has the red brick snap-on scanner. So, you know, we were working, uh, he was working with it and he comes to the results with me and then we figure out the next step. So, that's what he uses. When I was working on it, I was using my Apollo, but you know, this is fine. I haven't used this thing in 30 years. And we're gonna use an amp meter. All right, so I have the van right here, and I have the old computer. The problem what is the computer, okay? Here is the computer that I got from the local parts house, and you gotta, and you gotta put the prom in so it starts, and, and you know, the memory chip, whatever they call it. So, you put this thing in drive, we got a, you know, a pretty hard engagement. Uh, the one-two shift, forget it, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. And the rest, wasn't so bad. So um, the computer is the problem, and let me just say that that the one-two shift was happening at probably about 210 pounds of pressure, maybe a little more. So there is your violent shift. All right. So we're gonna go over to the van, which is right here, and, and I still have the gauge hooked up. I have the old computer hooked up, and I'm going to show you what I'm dealing with, okay? So you need a baseline pressure with this transmission is about one amp, okay, which is about one, you know, 1 1.04 to be technical amps, and about 60 pounds of pressure, okay? So I'm going to show you what this has on the, on the, pressure gauge. I'm going to show you what we have on the scan tool, which is process data, which is what the computer thinks it's putting out. And I'm going to show you what we have on the amp meter, with my voltmeter set to amps, which is the true, true reading is what it, of what is coming out of this computer. Okay? So, it's very hot in here and I got the doors closed because I don't want anybody to see me because they're going to come still come in if they see me. It's after hours and it's a little hot. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go into the car, just gonna basically swing the camera around and I'm gonna start it up and we're gonna see the uh, what we're dealing with with the old computer. And then I'll hook up the new computer and you'll see the difference. All right, so let me get set up over here and I will be back in a few minutes. Okay, before we get over to the van, I just um, remembered, I just want to tell you how I have my amp meter hooked up. Okay, now on the EPC solenoid, there is a high side and there is a low side. Okay, so my tech service, which is ATSG, they recommend when you're checking this to do it on the low side. So that's the wire that I'm on, okay? It is, I believe it's pin number four at the connector it's a blue and white wire, 
okay but I have it hooked up it's easier the computer is located under the seat so the computer is out and the wiring is right there nice and open very easy okay so I have my amp meter hooked up in series with the wire so that means I cut the wire I strip the end I put my positive side to one end and my negative side to the other end so I'm hooked up in series with the wire so we can see exactly what is coming out or going back in to the computer probably what's coming out you know it really doesn't matter what wire you go on because electricity flows but ATSG recommends the the the, um, the low side so I'm just going with their recommendation but it probably shouldn't matter but that's what I did okay so let me get set up over there I have the uh, um, I have the pressure gauge still hooked up the scanner is on and I have the old computer in so we'll see what's going on and then we'll put the prom in I'll come over to the bench and put the prom in I'll plug everything back in and we'll do the same thing all over again you'll see uh, what's going on here all right so I will be once again right back okay so we have the computer here all right and I have my leads hooked up I have my uh, uh, meter here and I'm gonna go all the way down to the amp scale and I have the pressure gauge and I have the old scan tool I don't know if you're really gonna be able to read this but I can tell you what it says um, on the you know on the screen this is the uh, this is the old school uh, red brick as they call it so let me start this thing up I actually have the back door open because this thing may be running for a few minutes so I'm gonna start this up okay now again baseline pressure baseline pressure I should have 60 pounds all right you can let me just see if I can get this meter into view here okay it's about 140 pounds baseline pressure that's crazy okay I'm going to turn the meter on to amps here all right so I should have one amp coming out of that computer and look what I have point three you know four zero which low amps equals high pressure okay and high amps which would be like maybe one amp equals low pressure okay so we got the scanner here all right transmission codes and data all right so I don't really know if you're gonna be able to see this let me just back out a little bit here okay but I'll read it to you if you can't see it I apologize because uh, I know there's a glare but I got pressure control amp okay pressure control amp 1.09 okay that should be actual and on this one pressure control solenoid um, I'm sorry pressure control solenoid amps 1.09 and pressure control solenoid desired amp 1.07 so this is actual 1.09 and this is desired 1.07. Basically, it's the same. I don't know if maybe you can see that. Okay. But the actual is 3.47. Point 3, that is that is way too high. And again, we want a baseline pressure of about 60 pounds, and we got 120 all right now when I give this a little gas let me just uh, want to make sure you guys can see this I'm gonna give this a little gas look at that it goes up to about what 240 pounds that's crazy and that's just lightly stepping on the gas all right and as I do that the amp is dropping because remember low amps high pressure Okay, so now what we're going to do, after I stop the buzzing noise, is I'm going to take the computer out, we're going to bring it over to the bench, we're going to switch the prom, 
and then we're going to plug it back in and do the exact same thing and see what we have. All right, so I'm going to see you guys back over by the bench. Okay, so here is the original computer, and we're going to switch this over. And here is my rebuilt one. This is a Cardone. Okay, so now to get this to get this out, we're just basically going to spread these two tabs out, and it will come right out. All right, so this is what we have to switch over. Okay, so we have a little lineup tab right here. And then pretty much these tabs are already out. And we're just going to put this in and push down. And it'll lock right in. Push down on the ends like this. Okay, it'll lock right in. It says push and push. Okay, so now we're going to hook up. I'm going to plug it back in. Blue to blue, red to red. And we're going to do the same test that we just did and see what kind of baseline pressure we have, see what kind of amps we have on the uh, volt on the ohm amp meter. And also, you know, the scan tool is going to read the same thing. But the big thing we'll look at is the pressure gauge and the amp meter with this. Okay, so I'm going to hook this back up and I'm going to see you guys back over by the car. In about two minutes, I will be right back and we'll finish it All up. All right, so we're set up with the computer. The amp meter is on at zero because the car is not running. The pressure gauge is at zero again because the car is not running. All right, so let's start her up. Now let's first take a look at the amp meter. Okay, now we got 1.6, figure 1.6263 amps. And the high amps equals low pressure. All right, so let's take a look. It's a little above baseline, but let's see what happens when we give it a little gas. All right, so let me get the, let me get this here. So before we had about 120. All right, now we have probably about 75, 80. Okay, and remember it went up to about 240 when I just hit the gas with my hand. I was in it just like that. Now it goes up to about 130. All right, so I got about 70 pounds, which is fine. 60 is the baseline. You don't really want below 60. Okay, so this uh, this isn't too bad, but probably about 75. But when we drove the car with the new computer on, the thing worked like a dream, nice and smooth. Okay, so again, let's take a look at... Let's take a look at... The amp meter here. I know we got a glare. Let me try to move the camera to get out of the glare. I'm hoping you guys can see that because I want to give it a little gas and you'll see the amperage go down. See how it goes down there? All right, so now when we drive this, instead of it making a one two shift, that 210 pounds, you know, it's making it probably at 100 pounds, and it's a perfect shift. All right, so I'm just going to shut this thing down so I don't suffocate in here. Okay. <clears throat> so once again, we have this 1994... Uh, Chevy G30 van with 5.7 and the complaint was a hard 1-2 shift. So what we did was we hooked in. All right, let me just get so you can see this here. Let's back out. Okay. So we hooked in, you know, on the scan tool, you know, it was saying, okay, the amperage was reading correctly, but it, had, it couldn't have been correct because of the way it was shifting. So this is the blue and white wire, which is the low side to the EPC solenoid. We hooked it in series and we went to amps and we saw we had 0.3 amps instead of one amp coming out of the computer. 
And there, of course, is your hard shift. So we got another computer. We plugged it in, because at that point, you know, it, it really couldn't be anything else. We plugged it in, put the prom in, and we got one amp at an idle with a baseline pressure of about 70 pounds. And you drive this thing and it works perfect. No more slamming on the shifts, no more hard engagement because before we also had a baseline pressure of about 120, maybe higher. And you put it in drive, boom, slams in. So that did the trick. Um, we had to, um, you know, we did ran a couple of tests with it. It also had a couple of codes. You know, one of the codes was for the manifold pressure switch, which is located inside the transmission. First thing I wanted to do was fix the codes, which we did. The second code was for the brake light switch, which we fixed. And we put a new manifold switch in. And also, while the pan was down, I put a new EPC solenoid in. It's just went off to keep dropping a pan, just in case that was the problem. Uh, and then we put it back together. We still have the same issue. That's when we decided to cut into the computer, because at that point, you know, we figured it can't be anything else. We got to be getting, there's got to be something wrong causing this thing to command high pressure to the transmission. So in actuality, you know, they had the truck for as long as they did, and the problem is not even the transmission. So, you know, we, we got it straightened out for them. Um, you know, I called them, I let them know what's going on. So we're gonna kind of deal directly with the guy because the problem was a computer. So we'll get paid for a diagnostic time and we'll get paid for uh, the computer. And what I did on their behalf to straighten out the problems at the shop, they're gonna pay me um, a fee for some diagnostic time and the parts that I used. All right, so that is about it for this uh, 94 van 4L60E with the hard shift. Uh, we found a faulty computer, faulty ECM. We got a rebuilt one from the local parts house. Um, I do think they're probably available from the dealer, but you know, we got these things remanned and uh, it's good to go. So I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day and we will see you next one.